All right. Well, good morning. Welcome into uh, Market Day Report. It's Report Day, right? This is the day we've all been talking about. I said for a couple, three weeks. There's a lot of folks out there that say a couple, three months, but uh, whatever it is, we're going to get the numbers today. And I think about why everybody's on edge. It's, it's, it's a binary outcome, right? It's hard to hedge when it's either up or down, yes or no, left or right, right? It's hard to really get your head around it and your hands around the problem. So that's why I think this one is kind of a dangerous one for most involved. But let's see about how these markets are faring so far overnight. And it's going to change. So this is just kind of a cursory exercise. We're just doing it because we do it, right? We're staying consistent. But we'll take a look at the corn board. Uh, we're up a penny. That's where we were when we did the radio show here earlier this morning. 427 and three quarters is last, and that's May. Seems like we've been at 427-ish, whatever it is, for a while now. Uh, we've got a tick lower in the D set, so just a quarter cent lower there to 462. So that's corn, uh, just either side of unchanged by a quarter to a half cent, maybe even a full penny at some point. Soybeans, they're lower by between, say, four and five cents. We're four and a half cents lower in the May up front to 11.88. Uh, Nova's down five and a quarter cents to 11.78 and a quarter. So we'll make sure we have, we'll keep an eye on all these things and what the changes are going into the numbers so we can tell what the number actually did for us here today. We've got wheat in Chicago. Uh, that May wheat is uh, up three quarters of a cent to 5.48 and a quarter. You've got Dees in Chicago wheat. One and a quarter cents are to 604 and a half. So that's about two cents off the high, two cents off the low. So we're right in the middle of the ranges there. Hard red wheat in Kansas City. That's up two ticks, a half cent in May. 578 and three quarters is last. We've got July sharply unchanged at 574. How about that? And if you go out to the D, sets up a quarter cent, one tick to 603 and a half. That's all Kansas City. Moving from Kansas City, let's go to Minneapolis and take a look at what we've got going on in the spring wheat there. And that's similar, only up about a half cent in the front. That's May. 651 and a half is last there, a couple cents off the high. You go out to the D, that's two cents better to 681 and a half, and that is three quarters of a cent, three ticks off the high there. That's spring wheat. Uh, cotton uh, was down yesterday, and it's bouncing back a tad today. 61 points higher to 9138, that's May. We're 11 points better in D, to 8345. Let's bring in our next guest analyst, Brian Hoops. He's with Midwest Market Marketing um, Solutions. Thank you very much for being on there, sir. All right. Uh, I don't know. Should we talk about opening day baseball? I mean, what should we talk about? We might have. We might have. To. <laughs> I mean, because whatever we say now is going to be ridiculous by 11 o'clock. But anyway, I'll let you have a stab at it. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, you know, you're right. What we talk about here, these export sales that were out this morning, really don't make a whole lot of difference because our closing bell is no doubt going to be influenced by that uh, quarterly stocks planning intentions report that comes out at 11 this morning. So, you know, we did have a little bit of follow through selling in corn and soybeans overnight. Um, corn kind of cleared up or, or came back by the closing bell. But uh, you, you look at the exports, just pretty much routine across the board. We had some more cancellations by that unknown destination category. China ended up buying some soybeans from us. But uh, as a net result, just pretty much a routine number of corn, around 47 and a half soybeans, around 10 million bushels, wheat about 12 and a half. So really nothing that stands out there. The, the key numbers are, are going to be what happens later this morning. Um, quarterly stocks, no doubt, look to come in larger than year ago but the question will be is how much larger and, and is there signs that the demand is is starting to improve and we're tightening up any of those stocks that would be bullish for our old crop new crop of course is going to be focused on how many acres are being seeded trades anticipating almost three million less corn acres than last year and almost four million more soybeans than a year ago and a couple million wheat acres less so those are kind of the key numbers to watch is how do they USDA, how does that compare to the average trade guess going forward here today? Uh, I think I asked you this in the radio. Was it yesterday? Maybe? I don't know. It all kind of runs together. But I mean, how they take these surveys, who they talk to. And I think, was it you that said they actually call you and ask you what you think? Yeah, that's you did talk about that yesterday in our in our uh, radio program. Um, they, they do contact us. We're one of the firms that puts out our, our estimates for the quarterly stocks and, and the uh, planning intentions numbers. Usually it's compiled by Bloomberg or Reuters or mm -hmm. Dow Jones or Wall Street Journal. So it's a survey. It's based off of what we expect. And we take a, a survey of our brokers around the country that talk to their clients, you know, from Minnesota down to Texas and, and east and west coast, you know, wherever you're farming at, we, we try and ask and, and find out uh, best of our, our ability what what the consensus is and we kind of feel that it's going to be more in line with what they did last year compared to last year did they plant less corn more corn and it's pretty much going to be pretty spot on similar to last year not much in the way of any changes and so you use as your baseline last year's number you don't look at what folks think about this year already right 
Yeah, we look at what what did they do last year? How many acres did they plant last year relative to this year? Are they planting more corn acres this year compared to last year? Are you going to plant less corn acres? And and that gives us our kind of our baseline numbers. What did they do last year? How is it going to compare this year? I, I, that's that's that, I think that's the nitty gritty. That, those are the good things to talk about because I don't think a lot of people know. And as time has gone on, I would say even after say COVID, uh, Brian. Um, a lot of folks don't even reply to these surveys. That's a problem in the financials. We're, we're, you know, I mean, we've got less than half reply to the non-farm payroll survey, which is bad. I mean, that's that's not going to get good data. But you think a lot of people give numbers on this one? Um, I think there was around uh, 50 firms or so maybe that were in, were interviewed. A lot of times, some of these uh, on those monthly ones, it's less than less than 25 that that reply. So okay. this one was probably a little bit more of a, a broader spectrum. But uh, normally, it's it's uh, in the 20s. And if you talk about uh, Nopa Crush or some other obscure report, it could be as little as five to seven firms replying. I think that's good to know. All right, stay there. We're going to go away. We're going to pay some bills. We're going to come back and see what uh, the uh, livestock did overnight. We'll talk to Brian about that. We'll be right back after this. All right, welcome back. Why don't we talk about livestock for a second and see what's going on there from the over. Well, we don't have it over from yesterday, right? Because I always get crossed up. And I forget that these guys petitioned the exchange and said the overnight markets are no good and they don't do them anymore. I think a lot of people should do that, too. All right, let's take a look. Let's bring up live cattle and see what that's got in store for us from yesterday. Well, we're going to be... Yesterday's gain, right, was uh, April was up 50 cents. So that's where we're going to be starting off at. 183.60 was the close there. We were up 25 cents in the Ds to 184.17. We'll see how we get started here this morning. Peter Cattle, uh, see what they did for us. What did they do? Uh, they were up a little bit as well. April was quoted at 142 higher, buck 42 higher to 246.87. And we did see that step up 87 cents to 259.72. Yesterday, Lean Hogs, what they do for well, Everything was up yesterday, but not by much. We got an April board and Lean Hogs up 52 cents to 86.10. And May was up 65 cents to 92.40. All right, let's bring back in Mr. Brian Hoops. He's the president of Midwest Market Solutions uh, in Springfield, Missouri. Thank you very much for coming on and sticking around. Um, what are your thoughts on how we get out of the box here when it comes to the livestock today? Um, export sales for pork, marking year high this morning, over 55 million tons, so should be supportive to the hog market. Uh, you know, we've had very strong export sales in the last three, four or five weeks, and this was the best one out of them all this year. The beef sales, however, only 12 and a half million tons, a disappointing number, very close to the marking year low. Um, I think that's going to be the theme uh, for the next several weeks. Strong exports as far as pork goes. Um, of course, you have a quarterly hog and pig report this afternoon. The cattle market, I think, is going to struggle with this demand. You know, took a couple of our kids out for dinner last night, talked to them about you know their their grocery buying habits. You know, they're they're backing away from beef because it's high priced. They maybe buy steak, but it's only on a special occasion. You can't uh, freeze beef as easily as as they can chicken and and uh, pork and, and those those cuts are a lot cheaper and for your younger consumers that's what they're looking at buying is trying to save money because everything else is just skyrocketing and as far as their costs go and, and trying to live on paycheck to paycheck i got two words for them top ramen all right that's what i did when i was their age <laughs> there I mean, you I go. Got, yeah, all those different flavors man you can get along with that forever and then maybe a little bit ma throwing some macaroni and cheese if you got some extra money but uh <laughs> Uh, steak, was, steak was not in my vocabulary when I got out of college. I'll tell you that right now. And if it was, it was steak gums. Remember that really thinly sliced stuff they don't make anymore, but you could actually see that. you could actually see through the cut of beef. That's how thin it was. So I mean, your kids are lucky, man. It was not in my vocabulary. But anyway, great stuff. Thanks for coming on. Always good okay. to see you. I hope good luck today. And then with a the number, of Brian Hoops, he's with Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri. But uh, our 